I think I've got the audio squared away. If you could just let me know in the chat if you're able to hear me now. Um, so some of the things that I've gone ahead and I've done is I've added this croaky, croaky reference. I cannot say that today. And I've gone ahead and I've pasted it into layer one that I'm working on on this first artboard. And it's currently set to have an opacity of, I believe I set it to 60%. Um, so great, looks like you guys can hear me now, so that's good. Um, so I've gone ahead and set the opacity to 60%. I'm gonna go ahead and click out of that. Um, I think for right now though, I do just wanna be working on one croaky, so I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna select crop image. It's gonna bring up this little ant line box and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna crop out the other two croakies. I do just want one. And then I'm just gonna press enter and that'll crop it for me. Um, so now I'm going to go to my layers tab. I'm going to select at the bottom, new layer. And it's gonna create layer two for me. So now I'm going to double click on layer one and I'm going to name this croaky layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and lock it. And then I'm gonna select layer two so that I'm working in layer two only. So now one of the first things that I wanna do is Think about the concept that I'm going to be creating here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some sort of A-line pencil skirt and I'm going to do a smaller layer tank top and then we will have some sort of knit textile on top to kind of tie it all together. So I think one of the first pieces that I'm going to work on is just going to be those uh, that pencil skirt and then that, that tank top element. So hopefully those won't take super long. Um, I believe the knit layer will take the most time and dedication. So let's just go ahead and get started. So now I'm just going to select P, that's quick selection for the pencil tool. And I'm going to go to my stroke tab um, just to see what's going on here. I'm going to go back to properties. I want my fill to be transparent and I want the stroke to be black. And I do want it to be one point. So I am using a reference photo here that I'm pulling out of a pattern development book. Um, that I've used for textile classes. So I am just gonna copy the basic shape of this and then we're gonna add some different elements to it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here, actually scratch that. I'm gonna hit Command X to get rid of that. Um, I'm gonna go back to view and I'm going to deselect snap to pixel. I'm gonna make sure that I can get, actually, I don't think I wanna be working with any of that. So I'm gonna take off snap to grid as well. So now I just wanna be working here in the middle and I'm going to bring it just a little bit outside of the waistline. I don't want it to hug too much. And then I'm going to add a point here. And then I do want it to be above the knee. We can alter the length uh, later. So then I'm going to go ahead and just make this correspond to the top. And it told me that it was intersecting. And I'm just going to go ahead and make that a close shape. I'm going to go back to my quick selection tool. Um, so now I'm going to give this a little bit of shape um, as well as some extra elements to it. So I'm going to use the curvature tool. And we have this anchor point here. So I can move it around with the curvature tool. I'm also going to add a bit of shape here. And I'm going to add some shape here as well. And I'm going to have it come down just a little bit. So now I'm going to do A, and this is my direct selection tool. I'm going to select this end anchor point. I'm going to zoom in so I can get it exact. I'm going to bring it just below this, and I'm going to alter this handle point just a bit. And let's take a look at that. So the top part's looking okay for me. This I'm not a huge fan of. So let's see if I can... Yeah, there we go. That's what I wanted. Um, so now we have this basic shape for the right side of the skirt and I am going to now add the details to this right side and then after that we will just copy it and um, make sure that everything is symmetrical and then add any details that aren't meant to be symmetrical. So now I'm going to, I think I'm first going to add a waistband here. Um, just a, a quick little detail. I think. In the end, I may end up adding a different kind of waistband to this, um, kind of like a, maybe like a belt, if you will. 
So now from this line moving down, I'm going to take my pencil tool again, and I want to add just a little bit of creases to this. So I'm gonna do just about here, and then I'm gonna bring this straight down. I'm gonna press enter, and then I'm going to do one more line about this far away. And we're going to bring this straight down as well, and then I'm just going to press enter. So now I'm going to go back to my curvature tool. I'm going to add a little bit of curve to this line, press enter. I'm going to do the same with this line, but I'm going to add a little bit more curve just to give it some shape. I think I actually want that to be a little less curve, so there we go. And then I'm also going to add curve to these bottom lines. Here, and then... We can correct that in a second, and then just about in the same place. I do want it to be just slightly curved. So this one curved a little bit better for me, and I'm going to go ahead and fix this one over here. So I'm going to use A, my direct selection tool. I'm going to click on this point, and I am going to actually, let's see. So I'm going to right click on my pen tool, I'm going to do de -link, delete anchor point tool, I'm going to delete that point and go back to my curvature tool. And I'm going to readjust this curve to get it to fall correctly. Um, and really quickly, if I just want to turn off layer one just to see what it's looking like, I'm going to go ahead and fix some of these curves. I'm still not extremely happy with the curve that's happening on the outside here. Um, so I'm going to go back to A, my direct selection tool. I'm going to select this anchor point and I'm going to curve that in a little bit as well as curve this one out. I'm going to zoom in a little bit down here. I do not want this to flare out at all. Let's see if we can delete this anchor point and see what happens. That's okay to me. Um, I do believe, however, that I do want to continue to adjust this point. So I'm going to go back to A. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to move it in slightly. Press enter and take a look at the full thing again. I do like what this line is. Whoops, not what I meant to do. I'm going to go to V really quick just for my selection tool. I'm going to select this individual line. I'm going to move it a little bit closer. And then in regards to this outside curve, I do think it is curving just a little bit too much. Um, or rather, maybe this one not, not enough. Um, so let's go to A. I'm going to select this point. Did it move the whole thing? What did it do? Yeah, it did move the whole thing. Okay. So let me go ahead and just select this one individually. And let's see what we can do here. So I'm going to go ahead and take away this anchor point. I don't want it anymore. And I'm going to go back to my curvature tool. I'm going to select this curve here. I'm going to bring it in just a little bit. I'm going to zoom out to see what that looks like. So that looks okay to me. Um, I may end up altering these points in the long run, um, but just for a little bit of detail to it, I think I'm okay with it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the croaky layer back on. Um, I'm actually gonna go to the croaky layer. I'm gonna unlock it. I'm gonna lock layer two again, however. I'm gonna select the croaky really quick. I think the opacity needs to be turned down. So I'm gonna go with, let's go with 35. I really want it to be almost barely like very, <laughs> barely visible. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and lock the croquis layer and unlock layer two. And I'm gonna go ahead and layer, uh, or name layer two as, let's just name it skirt layer. I think that's suitable. Um, so now really quickly, I think I'm gonna try to add as many details as I can here really quick um, to this side that I really want to have. Um, so it looks like, I mean, there's really not a whole lot that goes on with a, a little pencil skirt. Um, but I do think I'm going to select these two lines. I don't want them to be so dark um, because I don't want them to seem like seam lines. I do want them to just kind of be like pleat lines or crease lines to give a little bit of detail and body to the skirt. So I'm going to go ahead and make this 50% in opacity. Um, and I may actually... So let's go to stroke, and then it looks like we have a weight of one point. 
Um, I want to see what it looks like if I change the profile to be this one. So I think I like that a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and select on these one more time. And going back to properties, I'm going to increase the opacity a little bit because that did make it a bit thinner at the end of the lines. So I'm going to go with, let's just say, 67% and see how that looks. Yeah, so that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to keep it like that for right now. Um, and we can work on the belt in a little separate section of this. So really quickly, I'm going to... I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to right click and group them. And then I'm going to select them all again. I'm going to right click or I'm going to command C and then command V and that'll copy them for me. And now I'm going to right, uh, right click, go to transform and I'm going to reflect them. I want them to be reflected over the vertical axis and I can select this preview button just to see what it would look like. I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to move this up to join there. So now one of the first things that I'm going to do is really quickly, I'm going to select all of this. I'm going to right click and I'm going to ungroup. I'm going to check that one more time just to make sure that everything has been ungrouped. And now I'm going to go to A, which is my direct selection tool. And this tool just allows you to directly select individual points without selecting the entire line of a project. Um, so first I'm going to click and drag over this portion of the skirt and I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to select this path point. And then I'm going to click and drag to select the left half and I'm going to select the white anchor point. So now I have both of those points selected. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to average them. Um, I want them to be averaged both ways. So now they should be averaged and now I can join these points. Okay. So let's see what we have here. Let's click out of that. I can shift and click on this point. Shift and click on this point, right click join. Okay, so we need to get rid of this error message. So the next step that I'm actually going to take is to completely get rid of this middle line and that's going to make it no longer a closed object. So I'm going to go to the eraser tool, right click on it, and that brings up my scissors tool. So now I'm going to select this portion of the line and scroll all the way down and select the bottom portion. And now when I click on this line, it should be detached. So I'm going to click X and then I'm going to do the same thing one more time down here as well. Okay. <laughs> so really quickly, go ahead and select there. We may have a little bit of a point there that didn't get quite chopped off so I'm going to go ahead and click there and now when I select this I can just command X it does look a little bit like I didn't quite get rid of this path enough um, so I'm going to go back to my scissors tool I'm just going to select a little bit higher up I'm going to go to V command X get rid of that piece scroll all the way down and do the same thing here so back to my scissors tool I'm just going to select a little bit further down, go back to my selection tool, and command X. So now what we're working with is the skirt without a middle line, which looks already a lot better. So now we're going to try to join these points again. So I'm going to go to A, my direct selection tool, and I'm going to select, let's see, let's read. So this is path, and this is anchor point. So let's just see what happens. Didn't quite get the other one. Average, both, right click, and now we are going to join them. Two different <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and use my to delete some of these points. So that way they will be the endpoints of the line that I'm trying to join. And I'm going to hold down shift, select the left one, click and drag over the right one. 
I'm not really sure. Let's see. Anchor path. Let's go ahead and get the path one first, and then we'll get the anchor. Right click, join, and now. Oh, shoot. Hold on, let's zoom out really quick. Where did, where did I go? Sometimes Adobe can be really hard to work with when you do not have a mouse. So, yeah, so now it looks like we're working with one point at the top here. And I'm going to do the same thing to this piece of the skirt. So, I'm going to go back to A, my direct selection tool, click and drag over the right half, hold down shift, and select the white path point. And do the same with the right side, right click, and I'm going to average them in both axes and then join them. And then I'm going to take the same steps and do it at the bottom as well. So let's see what's going on here. So it looks like we have one point here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And if I do this, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to A, direct selection tool. It looks like maybe when I join the top half, I no longer have to join the bottom half, but I'm just going to make sure. Um, so yeah, so it looks like we're in pretty good shape. So I make sure there's no other point down here that we're working with one point, which it looks like we are. So now we have one enclosed shape, which is really perfect for what we want. Um, and we have basically a pencil skirt. So then one of the next things that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and check out my brush tabs really quick. I am going to go to, let's see, where am I looking? Brush libraries menu. Yeah, so we're going to do brush libraries menu, other library. And then I am going to look for, it looks like I have, I do have some other, Other little brushes that I've made. Let's see if I can find them. I've made them in a past stream, but it looks like. Oh, here we go. Let's go ahead and open that. And I'll go ahead and put it up here in my tab bar. So it looks like we have some ruching, we have a zipper, um, and we have a stitch extra small Q shift. Cool. So now one of the things that I'm going to do next is I'm just going to add a couple stitch lines to make this seem a little bit more realistic. Um, so I'm going to right click on my pen tool and well, I guess at that point it was the delete anchor, <laughs> the delete anchor point. So I'm going to right click, create the pen tool again. Um, I'm going to select this stitch line and I do want to add the stitch to this portion. I'm going to hold down shift to make sure that my line stays straight and I'm going to bring it over here. Again, I'm just going to reselect this stitch that I've made. Um, I'm going to go to Properties, and I'm going to decrease it to 75%. And I'm also going to make the opacity 75%. And then I'm just going to go back to my Selection tool, click out of that. I'm going to use P to go back to my Pin tool. I'm going to make sure that I'm selected here. And then I'm going to hold down Shift to make sure my line is straight. I'm going to select my stitch that I want. I'm going to make it 0.75 stroke size and then 75% opacity. And then I'm just going to use V to go back to my selection tool. So now we have some stitches up here and I do want to add a little bit of a stitch down here. But I do think that I want to add kind of a smaller, smaller, or it would be a wider stitch. But um, it would, there would be fewer of them. So a, a smaller stitch in that sense. I want it to look more like a little bit like a basting stitch, if you will. Um, and then I may want to add a bit of a slit to the skirt, but we'll see. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to make a new stitch uh, for this purpose, um, but I am just going to create a quick little copy paste. This is kind of a if you don't ever want to make a stitch in the moment that you're working, I guess this is kind of a shortcut to getting around doing that. Um, and yeah, I see see the moderator commenting, nice to see this brush used again. Absolutely, it's always always a good feeling when you've made a brush and you're like, wow, like, you know, I can <laughs> I can use this. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and paste make sure this is about the width that I want. And I think, I think that it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the base of the skirt as a reference for the length that I want. And I'm going to copy and paste this line. And then I can see here that it's intersecting. I do want them to be 
pretty far apart, so let's see if we have one here. Let's copy and paste another one. Put it on against the end here, let it intersect. I'm going to select the middle one and get rid of it. So this is approximately how far away I want them to be from one another. Um, so now I'm going to select both of these by clicking and dragging. I'm going to group them and then I'm going to do command copy and then command V for paste. And I do want them to be approximately the same width apart. So really right, I'm going to right click really quick. I'm going to ungroup these, select this one, copy and paste it just so I can get that distance between them correct. Um, these should still be grouped. Bring this one, double click really quick to get out of that. <laughs> Bring this back and I'm going to get rid of this. So now we have four going and I'm going to copy and paste them. And then same thing here. I guess maybe I should have one of these as a reference for distance. So let's go ahead and see what we got now. Let's see, I want to make sure I want to right click after selecting these and group them together. Move them aside. And because this is such a big stitch, it doesn't take a lot of work to do this um, without actually creating a brush to create this effect. Um, which is why I <laughs> would be doing this instead of actually making a brush. Um, so now I'm just going to move this over here, add it to the end here, and I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to copy and paste them. This is going to be a bit too long, but that's okay. No worries. At least I will not have to do any more spacing with that random little line. So now I'm just going to get rid of this one with command X. And then if I select here, it looks like this one should be the last one that we have on the skirt. So I'm going to select this, right click, I'm going to ungroup it, and then I'm going to delete these three. I'm just going to select them all and then command X. So now when I'm looking at the stitch, it is below the skirt, so I'm going to select all of it. I'm going to group it, and now I'm going to move it up to the space that I would like it. And it looks like this is exactly how I wanted it to look. This is about the distance I want it as well. Um, so now I'm going to select this, and it I'm going to change the opacity of this to about 80%. Is that even do anything? Oh yeah, it should have. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and make it 75. I don't think it's quite light enough. Whoops. Let's go to 75. Enter and select out of it. So that looks pretty good to me. A little bit of a basting stitch at the bottom there. Um, I did not have to make a brush, so that's kind of nice. And now I'm going to go back to my layers. I'm really quickly, I'm just going to turn off my croquis layer to see what the skirt looks like. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it as it is right now. It's just like a, a flat pattern. Um, doesn't have a, a lot of detail. I'm not going to add any color right now. Um, yeah, so this is the skirt that we are going to work with. And now I'm going to go ahead and lock the skirt layer. And I'm going to go to the croquis layer. I'm going to unlock the croquis layer. I'm going to select my individual croquis, copy and paste her, and I'm going to move her beside the other croquis. Make sure she's even. So now I'm going to work on the top portion. I'm going to relock the croquis layer, and I'm going to go to the bottom here of my layers tab, and I'm going to create a new layer. Um, this one I'm going to title, let's just name it Tank. I don't know, tank top layer. That's fine with me. And now we're going to work on the tank top portion. So this should be pretty easy, fairly simple. Um, we may be using that ruching brush again, um, but we will see. So I want to do something. The tank top is actually something that I've never done in Illustrator before, so we'll see how this works. Um, I'm going to Select, I'm going to make it a little bit wider. Um, I kind of want to give it the idea that it's tucked into the skirt, but we'll see after we start laying, layering the objects, we'll see how that goes. Um, I actually want this to be, man, so I'm going to do that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm not going to make it too far out, but we are going to make it to right around here. 
and I'm going to go up like this and I'm going to go across and bring this back down. It does look like my pen has no stroke right now, so I'm going to go and add black to it. Oops, can't see. So, I guess tank tops are pretty basic. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, yeah, the skirt. Skirt's a vibe. So, let's see, I'm just formulating right now what our next step is going to be. Take a quick sip of water. So let's go ahead and let's add a strap detail to this just to get that portion out of the way. I'm going to add it to, I'm going to add it a little bit to the left of the anchor point to the path. And I'm going to bring it just over the shoulder of the croquis. I don't want it to be too thick. Um, I do want it to remain about the same size throughout. And then I'm just going to go ahead and go back to my selection tool. So now we have a strap here. Um, it's nice. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to my scissors tool. I'm going to select. I'm going to zoom in really far. <laughs> so I'm going to select here and I'm also going to select right here. I'm going to go back to B for my selection tool. I'm going to command X that out of there. And then I'm going to select here. Um, actually, I'm going to command Z. I don't want to cut it so close. So let's go ahead and go back to our scissors tool. Make sure that's reconnected. And I'm going to select right about here and right about here. So let's see what that did for us. So that fixed it a little bit. I think if I select here, I will be able to fix it even more. I'm going to go to A, which is my direct selection tool, and I'm going to select on these individual paths, and I'm going to adjust them a little bit. I'm going to make this one go here, and as for this point, I am going to make it a little bit shorter, and make it align directly with this, and then I think the other one is okay for me right now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of curve. So I'm going to use my curvature tool. I'm going to select right at, like, I guess, below the bus line is what you would call it. And add a little bit of curve to the tank top. And now I am going to, so let's go ahead and see if we can join these points. So I'm going to go back to my A, which is my direct selection tool. I'm going to select this anchor point and I'm going to select, let's see if we can this path point. Just remember to hold down shift because I just did not. So now I'm going to average these. I want them to average in both directions. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to join them. And then I'm going to do the same step really quickly though. I'm going to go to my selection tool. I'm going to see what's going on with this. Get rid of that. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to use V. I'm going to go bring this back to where she was. Let's see if that everything's lining up still okay. Looks like it. Okay. And now I'm going back to A, my direct selection tool. I'm going to select this anchor point, hold down shift and select this path point. Right click. I'm going to average them. I'm going to average them on both of the axes. And then I'm going to join them. So looks like we got a little wonky here, but nothing too crazy. I'm about to turn down a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to press enter, actually cancel, <laughs> go to V, select out of this. Um, I do not like that this is matching up though. So really quickly, I'm going to go back to A, which is my direct selection. I've got this anchor point and I'm going to move it down so it matches here. And I'm going to move this one down as well. Looks like we're matching a little bit better. And it just jumped right back to where it was. Go back down. Let's alter this a little bit. Bring this down. Let's zoom out and see what that looks like. 
just want to make sure that this looks like it's matching up with the other. I don't know why. I hate when it jumps like that. Okay. So let's go right about here. And I'll move this point down some more as well. Readjust this handle point. And select out of that. So that's looking better to me. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of curve to the straps so that way they give more shape to the garment. And I'm just going to do this very, very slightly. So I'm going to do that one there and I'm going to do this one a little bit here as well. I'm going to select out of there. So now we've got some curve going on there and before I add any curve to the rest of it, I do want to go ahead and copy and paste it. Let me command X this point away. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this. I'm going to right click and I'm going to group it. Looks like we have a random little point down here actually. So let me right click on this. I'm going to undo group. I'm going to get, oh, what are we working with here? Let's see. Let's go to the pen tool. I'm going to right click on the pen tool and do delete anchor point. I'm going to delete that point. Just a random little point that seems like it was attached. So now I'm going to go back, select all of this, right click, group, and then I'm going to command C, command V to paste it, copy and paste it. And then I'm going to reflect it. I do want it to reflect over the vertical axis. And I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to align these two middle points. And it's not necessarily entirely symmetrical on the croquis, but as long as the garment is symmetrical, I am happy. Um, so now we're going to go back and do the same process of cutting and combining these lines. So I'm going to zoom in as close as I can. And I'm going to get as close to these points as possible. I'm going to select this one. And I'm going to scroll all the way down. Let's see if I can get my mouse to work right. And I'm going to select corresponding point. I'm going to use my selection tool, select this middle piece. Let's see if I can get the right one though. Doesn't look like it. Let's see if we can't do that again. So it looks like I know that it's there. Maybe it didn't cut correctly. Oh, I see what the issue is. Okay, I'm gonna select all of this really quick. I'm gonna ungroup it. Now I can select on this and I'm going to command exit and then I'm going to do the same thing with the line that's underneath. I'm going to go back to my scissors tool and I'm going to cut this one as well. Zoom in even further, select my path, scroll up to the top, zoom in as close as I can, select that point. And now I have this line that I can delete. So now I'm going to go back to my pin tool, which I'm using as the link anchor point tool. And you can use the shortcut as minus to get here. And I'm really quickly just going to delete some of these extra points. Um, so I got rid of those. Um, I'm going to go back to the top and do the same thing. So it looks like we have this point, we have this point, and that's all. Now I'm going to go to A, which is my direct selection tool. I'm going to highlight the right side, click on this path point while holding down shift. Highlight the left side, still while holding shift, and then select the left side. I'm going to average them on both of the axes and then right click and join them. And then I just want to make sure that we're still working with one point, which we are. So now I'm going to use my hand tool. This might be a little bit quicker to get there. I want to go to the bottom and I just want to make sure that this is going to be one point as well, which it looks like it is. I should be able to adjust it like so without any issues. So now I'm going to add a little bit of extra curve to this tank top situation because it does look a little bit straight. Um, so I'm going to go to my curvature tool. I'm going to go down here to the bottom and let's actually see if we can delete this point without anything getting super messed up. Yeah, so something did get messed up really quickly. So I'm going to go here to my direct selection tool. I'm going to select all of this. I'm going to right click this. I'm going to click join. And I want to average them. Sure. Okay. Let's see if we can do it now. 
But so we can add a little bit of curve here. I'm going to just add a slight curve to the bottom. And then up here at the top, I'm going to add a slight downward curve. I'm going to select out of that. And now I just want to add some different details to give it a little bit of texture. Um, I'm going to add some ruching at the bottom so it gives it the effect that it's tucked in. And I'm going to use one of the brushes that we've made in our previous stream. So let's see what they're titled. So this is Gather Brush Small. This is, I think this is the one that we're going to go with first. So I'm going to right click on my Delete Anchor Point tool to make it the pen tool. I could have just used the shortcut P. I'm taking a quick sip of water. So while staying in the brushes panel that I've made, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to add this ruching effect. I'm not really sure how wide this brush is, but I'm going to select on the left side, hold down shift until I get to the right side. And I'm going to select this gathering, which is supposed to be small. Let's see if we do this one. Um, so I think I might like the bigger one a bit more. I'm going to move this line up so these points go, oh, let's see what's going on here. I'm not quite sure why it's not straight. Are we straight? Okay. <laughs> so let me just go ahead and select this. If I move it up now, it should move up properly. Um, so yeah. So now we have some ruching at the bottom. I'm not really a super big fan of this. I don't think it's really giving the effect that I want. It's probably a little bit too much. Um, actually, let me command C. I'm going to make it the smaller one. I'm not sure that this is going to do the same thing either, so I'm going to get rid of both of these. I'm just going to command X this line. And now I'm just going to add my own ruching lines for the sake of not having so many. So I'm just going to add some lines really quickly, um, really without a rhyme or a reason. And if they don't end up looking right, that's okay. Um, but these are the ones that I'm going to start with. I'm just going to do four. I'm not going to put one in the middle. Um, but then really quickly, I'm going to highlight all four of these lines. I'm going to go to properties. I'm going to make their point width 0.75 as I've done in the other ones. On the skirt, I'm going to make it 75% opacity. And I'm going to go to my stroke tab and I'm going to make the width profile to be width profile number one, <laughs> which is just tapered at the ends of the line. And I'm going to go to my curvature tool now and I'm going to select the midpoints of these lines approximately and just add a little bit of curve. And I may end up wanting to tilt some of these lines, and that's okay too. This one seems okay to me, and then this one as well. Let's add some curve there. And now when I go to this one, I'm going to use A, my direct selection tool, and I'm going to adjust this line. Actually, I may want to do this. And you can see here we have this little curve tool. Just didn't quite have the angle that I wanted. Let's zoom out and see what's going on here. So now it kind of gives it the effect that it's being uh, tucked in really quick. I'm going to go to my layers and I'm going to turn off the croquis layer. So we have this nice little tank top. I'm going to zoom in while the croquis is turned off. And I'm going to see how far I can get these lines to move down without coming out of the bottom. So that one looks pretty good. And then I'm going to do the same here. And same here. This one's already pretty close, so I'm just going to leave it. And then this one as well, I'm going to move it down and then I can just barely start to see the tip of it coming out. And now I'm going to zoom out again. So yeah, so this is what we're working with now. I'm going to turn my croquis layer back on just to take a look at it. I'm going to turn it back off. I'm going to add a couple more details to the straps really quick. So I'm going to go back to using my pin tool and I'm going to make a box here and here and here we'll just see how this works i'm going to make the point size 0.5 this actually may want to work on this on a line to line basis so i'm going to go ahead and command x to get rid of this i'm going to go back to my line i'm going to make sure that it's 0.5 and point size and I'm going to actually believe I don't want it to have a, a line there, but I'm going to add one here. I'm going to use my curvature tool really quick. I'm going to add some curve to this line. 
just to outline the base of this. And I'm going to bring this one in just a hair. I need to zoom in a little bit. It's still a bit too much. So let's zoom out and take a look at that. So that's okay with me. I'm going to go back to my selection tool. I'm going to go to the brush that I have made. Let's see what we have here. And I'm going to bring this back down to 0.5. I'm going to make the opacity 75%. So now we have a little bit of a stitch line here. Um, I actually do think I do want to decrease this opacity down a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and make this 60%. Um, so now we have one stitch line on the inside of that strap. And instead of making a whole new line, I'm just going to Command and copy this. So Command C and then Command V. I'm going to right click and reflect this over the vertical axis. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to put this in the same place as the other one. So yeah, so they're not exactly symmetrical, but that's OK. And now I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to group it. So now when I go back to my layers, I can turn the cookie layer back on and then we now have a tank top and a skirt, which is really cool. <laughs> so really quickly, I'm going to unlock my croquis layer. I'm going to select this croquis. Whoops, so I just cut it. I'm going to copy and paste it to get a third one. And I'm just going to make sure that it's intersecting properly, that it's around the same height as the others. Um, looks like we are now. Make sure that it's the same width apart. And now I'm going to lock my croquis layer again. Uh, first, I'm going to go to my skirt layer. I'm going to unlock it, and I'm going to select the skirt. And I'm going to Command-C and Command-V the skirt. And it should be, actually, let me undo that. So I'm going to select the skirt really quick. Looks like maybe I never grouped this one. So really quickly, I'm just going to group it. And then I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to Command Copy and Command Paste. So now we have a grouped skirt. And now I'm going to bring it up to the height of the other skirt. And I'm going to add the tank top on top. Um, and what I'm actually going to do, uh, just so we don't get confused here, I'm going to make a fourth layer. I'm going to call this TS for tank top skirt layer. Um, I'm going to select this. I'm going to command exit, go to my tank top skirt layer, and then paste it back in. You can see it's highlighted blue, so now I can tell that it's in the layer that I want it to be. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and lock my skirt layer back. I'm going to unlock the tank top layer and go back to that. I'm going to select the tank top and I'm going to copy and paste it. And I'm going to bring it over to the skirt layer. Um, but actually it does look like I'm going to command X this again and go to my tank top skirt layer and paste it again and make sure I'm working on the right layer. So now if I turn off the croquis layer, you can see that we have a skirt and a tank top together. But as you can see, the tank top does align a little bit further down to the skirt, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so the tucked in effect is really cool. Um, and I want to make sure that it looks like it has a little bit of extra detail to it. Um, so really quickly, I'm going to lock my tank top layer, and while the croquis layer is still not visible, I am going to select this. Uh, well, first, I'm going to move the tank top up, and I'm going to select the skirt. I'm going to right click on it, and I am going to ungroup it. And now one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to really quickly, um, I do just want to add some fill to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a direct selection tool and I'm going to right click this and I'm going to hold down shift and right click this. Let's see if we can join these two.
let's just see what we can do here. Hmm. Okay. So now I'm going to add actually a, um, a new layer <laughs> and I'm going to call this tank top skirt color layer. And I am going to work in the tank top color layer. I'm going to use my pen tool. I'm going to go to properties. I do not want any stroke. Um, however, I am going to use a bright colored stroke for the moment. And I do want my stroke point to be around 0.5. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace this. And as you can see, we do have a little bit, let's see, let me go ahead and change this so we can see it. I do want it to be 0.5 though. Make sure that everything is still visible. And then I'm gonna do a fill. I want the fill to be white. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and make the stroke opaque. So now we have this little white square here um, and this is just going to give us the effect that the skirt is not tucked in so when i'm looking at my layers i do want the color layer to be underneath the t-shirt or the <laughs> ts t-shirt okay now i'm wondering though however where the line went went okay so hold on, let's go back So we're working with this. And then where did my bottom line go? Okay, I see. Okay. So we're just gonna keep working the t-shirt or the <laughs> tank top skirt layer. I'm gonna go back to properties. Um, I'm just wanna see where my stroke is really quick. Um, I'm gonna keep it black. Um, so what I've done here is I've just made a new shape on top, but this is in the tank top skirt layer. Um, I want my stroke to be, I'll just leave it how it is, so that way that bottom line is still the same, and I want the fill to be white. And I'll click off of this, and now we just have a white band on the inside. I'm going to select all of this, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to group it. I'm going to go back to layers, and I am going to turn on my croquis so I can see where everything is at. I'm going to select this tank top, move it back down into position. Let's see though, is that where we need it to be? I think about right here. Um, so now when I click on this though, I'm going to right click and I'm going to arrange and I'm going to send it to the back so you can see here that the skirt is now overlapping the tank top selection. Um, I'm going to adjust the tank top just a tad bit. I want to make sure that it's going to intersect properly. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I am going to right click on the tank top. I'm going to ungroup it and I'm going to move the skirt down just a little bit. So now using my direct selection tool, I'm going to click on this anchor point, hold down shift and also hold down this anchor point. And it should okay, so command Z, let's not do that. Um, so actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my selection tool. I do just want to decrease the shape here at the bottom a little bit. Um, so I'm just gonna move each point individually. It won't be exactly symmetrical, but that's okay. So I am just going to move it in a tad bit until it aligns with the skirt or approximately a with the skirt. So let's see what we're working, if it changed anything up at the top. No, it did not, or at least it doesn't look like it. And then I'm going to select the tank top again without selecting the skirt, right click, regroup it. Um, then, so now the tank top is where I need it. I'm gonna select my skirt and I'm going to move it back on top of our tank top. So now when I turn the croquis off, we have a tank top tucked into a skirt. Um, and then we have the individual pieces separate from one another as well. Um, so I'm gonna quickly just select this tank top and skirt that I've made. I'm going to group these together and then I have the separate pieces. Um, so this is in the 
tank top skirt layer. I really should have named it something else. Um, I'm going to unlock the tank top layer and move over. I'm going to just make sure that this is grouped, which it is. Lock it back. I'm going to go to the skirt layer, unlock it, and I'm going to just make sure that this is grouped, and it is. And I'm going to re-lock this as well. So now we have three, these three pieces that we've been working with. Um, and I am going to now make which this may be one of the biggest challenges I've ever given myself in Illustrator, um, but we'll see what we can do. So <laughs> um, what I'm attempting to make is going to be a knit weave um, shirt of some kind. Um, so I guess the real question is, is how do I want to achieve this knit effect? Do I want, um, do I want to make all of these knit lines individually or do I want to use a, a pattern to paste into it? Um, so we'll see. Um, um, so yeah, so it may just take a little bit of trial and error and that's totally fine. Um, <laughs> but we will never know until we get started. So let's just go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna go back to my croquis layer. I'm gonna turn it on. I'm going to unlock it and I am going to select this guy. I'm going to copy him one more time with command copy, command paste or command V, I suppose. I wanna make sure that we're at relatively the same height. And I also wanna make sure that we're around the same distance away. So I'm gonna go over right here. And now I'm going to work on our little knit thing. I'm honestly a little bit intimidated by trying to do this, but <laughs> we're going to try to do it anyway. Um, so really quick, I'm going to go to my tank top layer. I'm going to take it off. I'm going to command and paste a third tank top. I'm going to add her to actually, I'm not going to command copy that one. So really quick, I'm going to lock that one back. I'm going to go to our skirt tank top layer. Unlock this really quick highlight all this right click I'm going to ungroup it I just want to select this tank top um, I'm going to copy this and I do want it to be in um, the tank top layer is fine so I'll just put it back into the so now we have another tank top but this one has that curved effect um, that I added to the skirt tank top combination, um, but it's fine that this is in the tank top layer, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm going to move her over, and I also don't want it to be edited while I am working on this top knit layer. Let me just see really quick. So I do want it to be moved up just a little bit, um, but I do want to have like the visual aid of having it underneath of there because I do want it to show through through the knit layer. Um, so now we have the tank top skirt layer, and I'm actually going to rename this um, tank top skirt color layer to knit layer since I didn't add anything to it earlier. So everything's locked and I can now work on top of this tank top. Um, I also do want the knit to sit a little bit on top of the skirt um, and I do not want it to be symmetrical so I'm not going to be doing the typical copy and paste left right side reflection that I've been doing. Um, so yes, let's get started on this. Um, so really quickly, I'm gonna to go to layers um, or properties. I do wanna see if, okay, so really quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and make just a little square for reference. Um, and it looks like we have some different fill options here. Um, this is this has new swatch. Um, so I'm gonna see what I can do with this, if I can make some sort of an effect in this little box and add it as a swatch. Um, we will see. Um, So let's go ahead and see what kind of knit we're 
going to create. I do want it to be a loose knit. Um, I'm going to quickly pull up a reference image on another device. Um, so I can copy it. It's not really giving me any images that I really like. I think we're going to go with this kind of eyelet effect. I guess you would call this like a mesh effect. Um, so we'll see. But I do want it to be relatively small. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this smaller as well. So let's just go ahead and make it like this. I'm going to zoom in here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make the stroke size just be 0.5. I'm going to go to my pen tool. Um, I do just want to be working with a regular stroke brush, um, but I do want it to be 0.25, I believe. So I'm going to turn that back up. Um, so I'm going to first make a one of these guys. Copy, or right, so I'm going to really quickly group this. I'm going to copy and paste it. I'm going to transform it. I'm going to reflect it. This time I want it to be reflected over the horizontal axis. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to combine them. So now I'm going to use A. I'm going to combine these two points. So I'm going to hold down Shift. I need to zoom in a bit here, select this point, and then really quick, let's see what we got going on here. Um, double click, let me get out of here. So really quickly, I'm going to move this guy up. I'm going to select him again. I'm going to right click and ungroup it. And I'm going to do the same thing with this on group. I'm not really sure what it's grouping anyway. I'm going to combine these to this point. Going back to A, I'm going to use my direct selection tool. Right click on this side. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to now select this side. I'm going to right click. I'm going to average these points on both of the axes and then right click. And now I'm going to join them. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So now holding down shift, I'm going to select both of these points. I'm going to average them on both axes. What did it do? Uh, really quick. So going back to V, and now going back to A, direct selection. I'm going to select this one and select this one. And I believe that I can just join these. No, I can't. Command Z. So I'm going to average these one more time. Let's see if we can average them differently. So let's just do it on the horizontal axis. That didn't work. Um, so let's see what we can do. There we go. So now I'm going to join them. And now we have this little eyelid shape. It should be pretty small, um, which it is. Loving that. <laughs> and now I'm going to group this whole shape just to make sure that it stays together. And now working from the bottom of this box, actually, I don't know if I want to work in a box. Let's go ahead and try like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste this. Um, and I do want it to be connected at the points like so. So I'm going to zoom in and make sure everything is symmetrical. I'm going to move it in like this. I'm going to copy and paste again. And now I'm going to I'm going to take a quick look at my reference picture one more time. Okay. So now I'm going to actually command X this. I'm going to really quickly group these guys and then command 
C and Command V to copy and paste them. And I'm going to lower them onto themselves to make this kind of triangular figure. I do believe that I want this middle triangle to be a bit smaller. So a bit like this. And now I'm going to group them and let's see what we can do with fill. Does not look like I can make a new swatch. So let's see. I'm going to click on this. So we've got something going on here. If I right click this, add to library. Okay. So now All I have to do is figure out how I'm going to make this turn into a sweater. <laughs> so let's see what our repeat options are here. Um, I do think it is a little bit too close of a knit, so I'm going to widen that out a little bit, as well as here. So this is giving me a nice knit effect. So I'm just going to select out of that. And I am going to... I know that I've added... fill before. I do think it is, what is this tool called that repeated the pattern for you? That was cool. Um, so yeah, so this is a tool that I've never used before. Um, this was something that I found when I was clicking around. But if you go to your top drop down menu and you do object, you can select repeat. And I chose grid repeat. And that brought up the option for me to create this repeat pattern. And then I'm just adjusting the width of which it's repeating with these little sidebars. Um, but I'm still trying to figure out how I can turn this into a fill option. Um, but we will see. So I believe that I should be able to so we can resize this here. Um, let me see if I can do a quick Google search and figure out what I can do. So, and this is something that I've done before in Photoshop, but um, a little bit different in Illustrator. Okay. 
so let's see. So it looks like we have swatches here. It looks like I should be able to just do this. So let's see if that works. So now when I select this, if I do this, it does fill correctly. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this a little bit more. I know I keep changing it, but I do want it to look really open, but I also want it to definitely look knitted. Um, so I think I'm going to go with this one. So what I'm doing to create this into a swatches, I'm, I've opened up my swatches panel here on the side and I'm just going to click and drag it and I'm just going to drag it straight into the swatches option. And then when you select a closed shape, you can select the swatch. Um, these are some of like the presets that come, but these are the ones I've just added. Um, so yeah, so now we can, now that we have the swatch figured out, we can just go ahead and um, make this little sweater design. So I'm not going to start with a midpoint. I'm going to start at the shoulders. I want it to kind of do or have an off shoulder moment. Um, and it looks like we're already putting in that fill, which is pretty nice. Um, I think I'm going to go with three quarter lengths. Uh, really quick, I am going to deselect this fill because it is bothering me a little bit. Um, and then we have this here as our, our sleeve. And then I'm going to come down here to the waist. I'm going to do it a little bit offset here as well. Just like in here. And then continuing and creating this neat little shape. Um, I'm going to go to layers really quick. I'm going to turn off this tank top layer, which should get rid of this here. I'm going to hide these swatches really quick. And now I'm going to add some curve really quickly. I'm going to add this going back to properties. I'm going to make this one point. Um, so I'm going to add some curves. Um, I want this to be curved up slightly. I'm going to go to A with my direct selection tool, select this here a little bit. Um, move it up again. Here we go. I'm also going to move this one down quite a bit. Um, and we're just going to adjust this curve. I want this to curve a little bit upwards. And now I'm going to go back to my curvature tool. I'm going to add curve here. I'm also going to add curve here. Um, so I'm just doing some like quick, quick curving. I'm not going to do a whole lot of I'm not going to be too particular about it. Whoops. Okay. Starting to get finicky a little bit. So now I'm going to move this down here. Um, I don't want it to be so big. I do really just want it to fall on the body. Let me move this down. I'm going to move this up just a little bit to give it some shape. I'm going to curve this inward, curve this outward a little bit, and I'm also going to curve this outward just a tiny, tiny bit. Zoom in so I can do a little bit smaller. I'm also going to curve this out and I'm going to be curving this out as well. So now we have this shape going on for us. Um, I'm not super happy with this thing that's going on over here with this. So I'm going to do A really quick and do direct selection for this point. Um, looks like we have a little point here. I do want it to flare out just a little bit there. Um, that looks pretty good to me. Um, and then I want to work on this point a little bit. I'm going to move this one down just slightly um, and to make it a little less pointy. There we go. So now we have some straight curves. It does look like the right sleeve is a little bit bigger than our left one. So I'm going to go back to my curvature tool and I'm going to add a little bit more inside curve to this sleeve. Um, I'm going to press enter. I'm just going to go back to my selection tool. Um, that's actually a little bit too wide for me, so I'm just going to command Z that. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to A and I'm going to move this point 
inward. I'm not sure why both of our handles are going the same way. Just go ahead and do this, move it in a little bit. And I'm also going to move in these points as well. Let me move this one into right about here. And then I'm going to readjust this one to right about here. Um, so just gonna see really quick down here. I'm still just not super happy with this. Um, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Um, Command Z, just to redo that. Um, I do want this to be fixed though. Um, yeah, swatches are super useful. Um, I like using them. I've used them before, um, but it was a little bit more difficult for me to figure out how to make a knit pattern. Um, I'm actually surprised that it worked out for me that quickly. Um, so yeah, okay. So now what I'm going to do is, I do think I want this point to be moved in. Whoops, we just moved the whole thing. Move this point in as well. Let's zoom out just to see what's going on. Actually, we'll go back. Um, I don't think I want this side to be as pointy, so I'm going to move her up a little bit. And I'm going to curve, just doing the same thing over here. <laughs> Let's see what happens when we do it like this. Okay, maybe not. Um, so I'm just going to go back here. I'm going to delete this point. Um, and then I think I'm okay with the pointiness for a little bit. Um, so now I'm just trying to think about what kind of details I want to add to this, if any. Um, let's just go ahead and see what it looks like with a fill to it. So I am going to select this first one. Um, and I am going to change the opacity of this to be about, let's go with 65%, maybe even less. Let's go with 50. Um, so it is giving me this kind of sheer background to it um, but it definitely is giving me kind of the sweater feel that it, sweater feel that I wanted so I'm gonna go back to my pen tool I'm going to use just a regular pen tool and I'm going to select the path here and I'm also going to select the path right here and I'm gonna add this point I'm gonna add some curve to it And it is also giving me a fill, but I'm gonna turn the fill off for this one so I don't want any fill. Um, I want the stroke to be 0.5. I'm gonna to go to brushes. I'm going to select the small stitch to make sure that it's still, so I'm gonna turn it down to 0.5. So now we have a little bit of a, whoops, command Z, go back to V, select. So now we have a little bit of a stitch line here and I'm gonna add stitch lines to the neck and the um, little armholes here. Um, so really quickly, just doing the same steps again, going to my curvature tool. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of curve here. Um, I'm going to go to brushes, small stitch brush. I want it to be 0.5 and then just select out of that. Um, now I'm going to do the same thing over here. And it doesn't have to be exact. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but like Looking at some sweaters, they're uh, they're not always like super perfect. Uh, you know, it kind of has that slouchy effect, so things aren't really super meant to be symmetrical. I'm gonna go to A really quick. I do want this point to be a little bit lower. There we go. Going back to V. I'm gonna zoom out just to reference these two. And now I'm going to do the neckline. So I'm going to select right about here, um, and I'm going to select right about here. I'm going to use my curvature tool to add curve to this. Um, and they want to add curve in two places here. 
Um, but for right now, I'm just going to leave it like this. I'm going to go to brushes, select this, and I want this one to also be 0.5. And then I'm just going to use V and click out of that. So now we have some stitch lines on our sweater at the um, neckline and the waistline and the uh, wrist of the armholes. Um, so we do have this little knit design. So really quickly, I'm going to go to layers and I'm going to turn off the croquis layer. Um, so it is a little, it's a little strange for me to look at. <laughs> um, definitely doesn't have as much detail as the other things. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to add some gathering on this just to give it a little bit more of a knit feel. So kind of same thing as the tank top. I'm not going to add quite as much. Um, but I do just want it to have kind of a folding effect. Um, so really quickly, I'm going to select all four of these lines. I'm going to turn down the stroke to 0.75, turning off the swatch. I'm going to go to stroke and I'm going to use uniform profile too. Um, and now I'm going to add some curve to these. using my curvature tool, not my pen tool. And then I'm going to zoom out really quickly. I'm going to select all four of these lines one more time. I'm going to go back to properties and I'm going to turn the opacity down to 65% and click up over there. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, um, a little bit of a 3D effect to the sleeves here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select here and I'm going to select here. Go into my curvature tool. Just going to do this. Um, I am going to turn down the opacity, I believe. I just want to check really quick. So I've got 50% here. I'm going to turn this down to 50% as well. Um, I am going to right click and I'm going to first I'm sure this is uh, <laughs> selected and I'm going to send it to the back. Um, so now you can kind of see there's a little bit of a hole there and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. We'll see how this looks in the long run. I may not like it, but we will see. I'm going to go back to the curve tool, give it a little bit of a curve. I'm going to change the opacity to 50% as well. Going back to my selection tool, making sure the new line is selected, and I am going to arrange and send to back. Um, so now when I zoom out, I've got a little bit of an armhole situation. I am going to add a little bit more curve to these because they would not be perfect circles in real life. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit of a curve here. Not so much though. Let me zoom in. I'm going to do it like that, and then opposite on the other side just to make it a little bit deformed. Um, cool. So now we have a little bit more detail to this. Um, I think I am going to add a couple more lines to the top of the shoulder. Um, so I'm going to, using my pen tool with stroke, I'm going to change this to 0.75. I'm going to do a line here, press enter. And I'm going to do a line here, press enter, and I believe I'm going to do an even smaller line here. Now I'm going to hold down shift, select all of these lines. I'm going to change their opacity to, let's go with 65%. I don't want them to be as light as the rest of this. And I'm going to go to stroke, uniform profile one, and I'm going to click out of that really quick. And now I'm going to go back to my curvature tool, selecting these lines. I'm going to add just a slight amount of curve if it'll allow me. So it looks like I'm using my pen tool again. So I'm going to go back to my curve tool, selecting this, really just adding the smallest amount of curve. And also on this one, and uh, I am going to make this line a bit smaller. I don't want it to be so wide, so big. Um, so I'm going to zoom out. So yeah, so now we have a little bit of a draping effect over here on the shoulder. Um, 
And if I wanted to, I could add the 3D effect around the neckline. Um, however, I do want to be able to layer this with the tank top. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I am just going to quickly select this and I'm going to copy and paste it. I'm going to move it out of the way and I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to group it and I'm going to group this one as well. Um, so now I'm going to, to go to my layers. I'm going to turn the croquis layer back on. So as you can see, we have the skirt, the tank top, just the skirt. And if I turn the tank top layer back on, we've got just the tank top. Um, so now if we look over here though, we can see that we have the sweater, the tank top, and I'm about to add the skirt. Um, so I am going to add really quickly, I'm going to go to my croquis layer, I'm going to unlock it. I'm going to select this croquis, copy and paste it, and just like the others, make sure that it's aligned. That looks about right. I want to make sure that it's almost the same distance away. That looks all right to me. Um, and I'll just go ahead and turn that back to being locked. Um, I am going to select this um, knit shirt that I just made and we're going to put it back on top of the croquis. Let me zoom in really quick and I'm going to just put it there like how we have it made. So now when I turn the croquis off we have the sweater, the tank top, just the skirt and just the tank top. Um, and then we have tank top skirt, I'm gonna, or tank top sweater and then I'm going to add the skirt. Um, and then we still may those extra few lines at the bottom. Really add a lot. Yeah. So yeah, the that's kind of like one of the things I've learned in textiles is like a few lines can really go a long way to adding detail. Um, so yeah, so I really like to add the little draping lines. Um, so now what I'm going to do with these individual pieces is I am going to add a little bit of 3D effect, like I have done with the um, sleeve of this. Um, so what I'm going to do is first, while I'm working in this knit layer, um, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to turn the croquis layer back on. Um, actually, I'm going to turn it off. I don't need it. And then I'm going to do the same thing with adding the little 3D effect. I'm going to select these two endpoints. Um, I do want to make sure that they're going to have the same opacity. So I believe this is like 75%. We can check in just a moment. Um, does that really look like it changed any though? Let's see, this, this is, I'm gonna right click on this. I'm gonna ungroup it. Um, I do wanna see, so this is at 50. If I select this, let's change this to 50. And I'm gonna go to my curvature tool. I'm gonna do a little bit of a curve. Um, so now you can see here that we have kind of the, you're viewing the inside of the sweater. I would like to move this point, however. It's a little bit like this. And then we then have the inside. Um, and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click on this line individually. Um, I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to, let's see. Excuse me. So I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to go to my little drop down menu at the top. And I'm going to do effect, I'm going to do path, and I'm going to do offset path. And I want the path to be offset by much less than this. Let me redo that. So I'm just going to go, I just copied it and placed another line on top. I'm going to go to effect. I'm going to do path and I'm going to offset path. 
and I'm going to go back. I'm going to do zero four and I'm going to hit OK. So now we have this middle path line and we have this new path line. Um, so what I'm going to do with the new object here, before I do that, I'm going to use my scissors tool. It's not really doing what I want it to. Okay, let's try this a different way. So I'm just going to copy this line. I'm going to copy and paste, and I'm going to bring it just a little bit behind here. And now I'm going to use my scissors tool on this line. I'm going to select here, and I'm also going to select here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to select these endpoints. I'm going to get rid of them. Um, I'm not going to add any knit to the inside of the textile because I really want it to be understood that this is the inside. I don't want it to run in too much with the other knit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to brushes. I'm going to select this little fine point stitch and make sure that it's the same size. I think we were doing 0.75 if I'm not mistaken. Looks like we we're doing 0.5, so I'm going to make this 0.5 as well. So now we have the stitch on the inside. I do want this to be, I actually think that's fine. We can just go with this. Um, so we have the stitch line on the inside. I'm going to use my curvature tool on this line as well. Um, I do just want to make sure that it's going to follow the curve appropriately. And then I'm going to go back to my selection tool and click out of this. So now we have the inside of this little sweater. I'm going to add a similar line to the bottom. I'm going to add my curve. Do a little bit. Don't want it to move quite as much. So now we have this here. Um, I'm going to change the opacity of this line to 50%. And I'm going to copy and paste this line. I'm going to put it right about there. I'm going to use my scissors tool. And select to delete the end portions of this line. Now I'm going to go to brush, select this one, make sure that it's 0.5. And now I'm just going to adjust it. I do need it to be just a tad bit longer, but no worries, we can just do this. And now we have a stitch line there as well. Um, just for a 3D version of this knit sweater. Um, so you can kind of see where the fabric is falling. Um, so I think I'm happy with this. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it just as the 3D option for this or a little bit more 3D effect to it than the other ones. Um, so really quickly before we run out of time, I do just want to see what all of the things that we've made look like together. So we have the sweater by itself, skirt by itself, tank top by itself. We have tank top and skirt, and now we're going to do sweater, tank top, and skirt. Um, so I'm going to go back to my layers. I'm going to turn the croquis on just for the sake of being able to see it. I'm going to go to my skirt layer. Let me see what layer she's in. What layer are you in? You're in the skirt layer. So I'm going to copy and, oh, Command Z, Command Z. I'm going to Command Copy and Paste this. And I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to make sure that it is, actually, I do not want the skirt piece. I want the other skirt piece. I'm getting confused now. So this is the tank top skirt layer. But it's locked. Okay. 
So copy and paste. I want the skirt. I'm going to command exit. I do want it to be in the knit layer. Bring it over here. And I'm now going to uh, arrange that on top of the uh, tank top. So I'm going to do a range. I'm going to send to back. Um, and then I'm going to Let's see, is this in the tank top layer? Oh, no. <laughs> so I'm just going to come in X that and go back to the knit layer and paste it. And I'm going to bring her inside of here. Um, I'm going to do a range. I'm going to send to back. Um, let me just make sure that it actually did that. So a range, send to back. I'm going to do a range and I'm going to bring to front just to make sure. So it does look like that the tank top does cut in to the skirt a little bit on the side. It doesn't really follow the um, shape of this. So I'm going to turn off the quirky layer really quick uh, because it is a little bit distracting. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to come over here to our little knit layer. Um, I'm going to copy and paste this one more time just so we have a unaltered version. I'll just put it in the general area. And now I'm going to adjust the sweater on our tank top version. Um, one of the things I'm going to do first is I'm going to take a look at this. I'm going to see if I can put it in black which I absolutely can, which is super awesome. Um, so I'm not really sure what I'm attempting to do first. Hold on. Let's go ahead and make this like a dark gray color. I do want it to show through the sweater a tad bit more. And I do want the Sweater to take a little bit of a better shape. So I'm going to click on this. It is grouped. Um, if I select it now, it looks like we are working with 50% opacity. I'm going to make these lines 90% uh, opacity um, just so it's a, actually, let's make it a little bit lighter. Let's go with, let's go with 75. I think that makes it dark enough. Um, and now I'm going to just quickly arrange with my direct selection tool, I'm going to alter the shape of the base here. I do want it to fall over the side of the skirt a bit more. Um, and actually I'm going to zoom in, bring it just a tad bit out. Oh, it's doing that thing. So let's actually, let's play around with this one. So we can go with this. Um, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> So really quickly, I'm going to go use my V tool, select this curve line that I had originally put at the base of the shirt, and I'm going to extend it. And so now it looks like our sweater is 100% on top of our skirt. Um, and is taking shape with this tank top. Um, so let's see what our next step is. So we've got tank top um, or sweater. I'm going to select this. I'm going to group it really quick just because uh, I want it to stay together. And we have the tank top and skirt. We have sweater and skirt. And I'm actually going to go click and drag this down here. Let's put these together. Oh, I don't know why that's ungrouped really quick. Let me group these guys. Um, I do not want to. Let me get my layers in really quick. I'm going to make sure the rest of these layers are locked. Uh, I do not want to alter them. I'm going to right click. I'm going to group this and I'm going to click and drag it back to where I had it previously. Um, I'm just going to put it here and I'm going to select this one. I'm going to copy and paste. 
And now I'm going to add this to our skirt selection. Um, and then we've got the 3D options. And we have top skirt, top uh, sweater. So now I'm going to do the kind of the same thing with the um, tank top to make it uh, 3D looking. So I'm going to click and drag over this, make sure that it's grouped. I'm going to copy and paste it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to click and bring it over here really quick. I know this looks like a complete mess. Um, so now I am going to really quickly use my scissors tool. I'm going to, well, first I, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, first I'm going to click on this. I'm going to ungroup it. And I'm now going to use my scissors tool. I'm going to select here and I'm going to select here as well. And so now we have this kind of strap shape. I'm going to select it with this line and I'm going to group this individually. Um, I'm going to select this. I have no reason to have this anymore. I'm really quickly just get rid of these lines and get rid of this line as well. And now I'm going to, making sure that this is grouped, uh, copy and paste it. And now I'm going to transform it. I'm going to reflect it. Um, I do want it to reflect over the vertical axis and I'm going to hit OK. And now I am going to adjust these on to the back of the other straps. So, so I'm going to use these as the back straps basically. So I'm going to move these, if it'll come with me. <laughs> um, well, okay. Cool. No. Okay. Come with me. Okay. There we go. So before I Add these straps I do need to add a back line so I'm going to use my pencil tool I'm going to select the endpoints of this line I'm going to use the curvature tool and I'm going to add a little bit of curve here um, I do want really quickly so I'm going to select on this I want the properties I do want the fill to be white so let's see if that does anything for me no it does not uh, actually yeah let's go with white I'm going to click on this line again and I'm going to do a range and I'm going to send to back so now it should be slightly hidden. Um, I'm going to use my curvature tool. I do not want it to be so perfect. I do want it to have a little bit more of an organic shape. Um, I am going to... Sure, let's just leave it like that. Okay. <laughs> um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I actually do want to reflect this over the horizontal axis. Um, actually, cancel. Let's see what we got going on here. Let's see. So now when I add this, if I rotate her a little bit, I do not want it to change in width, however. Actually, let's just take a new approach. Um, so now I'm going to use my pencil tool. Uh, really quickly though, I can notice that this line is not as thick, so I do want it to be one point. Um, I'm now going to use my pencil tool and I'm going to select here and I'm going to select here and I'm going to select right about here and I'm going to select here and here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some curve to her and I'm going to arrange, I'm going to send to back and I am really quickly also just going to add a curve to the top here. Should kind of give us the impression of overlapping um, <laughs> straps, if you will. Um, let's see what. Let's see if we can. Let's see, let's see what happens if. So I wonder where this little. Let's check out this one over here. So what's going on right here? What is this? I'm not really sure. Okay, let's just go back here and double click on that. So now we have a strap reaching for the back. I'm gonna copy and paste this. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna transform, reflect, and I'm gonna go over the vertical axis. 
And now I'm going to do the same thing over here. It's not quite long enough because I've adjusted this strap shape. So I'm going to use A and I'm going to bring this down and bring this down as well, making sure that it stays about the same width. I'm going to select it again. I'm going to right click and I'm going to arrange and I'm going to send to back. Um, I do want to adjust this shape a little bit. So I'm going to use B, go to my selection tool. I'm just going to alter it straight as it is. And so now we have two straps on this tank top. Um, it looks like I have about seven more minutes for streaming. So I think we can go ahead and make um, the bottom piece of this um, a little bit more 3D as well. Um, if I was not working so quickly, I would most definitely add um, some extra little stitch points to the sides here and it looks like I just wanted to check my battery really quickly so it looks like I'm working off of 11% sometimes this thing will really kill my battery um, so actually instead of doing some more 3d details I think I'm just gonna leave it um, as it is um, so I, th I think we cover a lot in this stream specifically we've got some knit we're using the fill tool we've also used the um, brushes tool as well and we've got some pretty good shapes here we've got some pretty good designs um, so this is where I will leave you guys um, I hope you've enjoyed watching my stream really quickly before I go I am just gonna turn that croaky layer back on see what we've accomplished turn it back off it is super distracting I do not like looking at it um, but yeah I think you know with with some extra time like these things could really be some more detail could be added to these things and they would look even better but within two hours I think I think we've completed a lot and I hope that whoever's been watching I hope that you've learned something about Adobe Illustrator so thanks for watching I'm gonna go ahead and do save as I'm just gonna keep it the same name so flat pattern one and I'm just gonna replace it and hit OK so thanks for watching and I hope you guys are having a great finals week